Will you pray with me, please? Holy God, we ask that you enter into our hearts at this very moment, that you speak your word into us. Allow us to hear your voice above all others, that we may know your will for us this day. And therefore, I ask that any and all words that may come from my mouth and all of the meditations of our hearts upon them be pleasing to you, O God. Amen. <clears throat> Last month in May, we celebrated Mother's Day and we spoke about a mother's love and how the world could use the love of a mother right now. A love that is kind and compassionate, protective and caring, willing to lay down one's own life for the safety of her children. Well, today we celebrate Father's Day. And I want to repeat that same message that the world sure could use the love of a father right now. A love that is kind and compassionate, protective and caring, willing to lay down one's own life for the safety of his children. There is always one issue, however, when crafting Mother's Day and Father's Day messages. And that is that some people, too many people, did not and do not have loving mothers and fathers. And that these celebration days can trigger hurtful memories and turn people away when a comparison is made between a mother's and a father's love and God's love for us. And while I know this one message today cannot instantly heal years of abuse, neglect, and lack of love, I want you to know that when we use the example of a parent's love for God's love, we are doing it in hopes of comparing what is best and most loving in people to what we can understand about God's love for us. Our dear friend Bob Jenkins used to say that we can only relate to other things by finding likeness in them. And that even with our best attempts, we still have to realize that what we know about God is limited. And therefore, we cannot limit the breadth and depth of God's love to the image of any one particular person, one particular father, but to an image of all the good qualities we would like in a father, that we would like from someone who is caring and kind, loving and compassionate, willing to lay down their own life for ours. who has created us out of compassion, breathed life into us with kindness, and came among us and did lay down his life for us. That one is the source of all of these things. That one is our God. For that is what the world needs right now. A God who loves us so much who will never leave us orphaned, never turn away from us, never abandon us into isolation, loneliness, and fear. And isn't that what we really want? On some level, to know that we are not orphans of God, that even though our world and those within it may turn away from us, neglect us, simply forget to love us, that God never forgets, always remembers, 
always seeks to heal whatever is hurting within us. Imagining God as the one who holds the entire universe in his hands, who holds on to us with loving arms, who searches for us and runs towards us when we are found. Imagining God this way, we can know that we are indeed loved and that even in the darkness of our own lives, God's face shines light upon us. There is already so much pain in the world. Our own individual pains and sufferings that work themselves into our lives and the pains and sufferings that continue to be exposed in our world. Pains and sufferings that can leave us feeling abandoned, feeling lost in it all, feeling unloved on our own, no one to look out for us but ourselves. But it doesn't have to be like that. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is a story about how a lost and hurting young man came to realize the love his father has for him. It is the story of the prodigal son, a boy who goes to his father and seeking to leave his father, asks that he be given his inheritance so that he can go out on his own out into the world, relying only on himself to get by. But when the world gets tough, and he realizes he wants to go home, he imagines that there may not be any love for him there anymore, thinking that his father would not welcome him home again, and would no longer treat him as his child. But that is not what happened. When the prodigal son was nearing his father's house, his father saw him coming, and even though there was a still a great distance between them, he ran to him, threw his arms around him, hugged him, and kissed him and showed him nothing but love for him. And the son knew that he would not be an orphan, that he was not unloved, that he had not been left alone in his pain and suffering, that he was not abandoned in a world that can so often cast us aside. Rather, he was embraced by a father who still loved him dearly. And so we honor all of those fathers who love their children, who reflect the image of God as father, and ask God to protect them. Amen. Will you pray with me, please? Holy God, we come to you with open hearts, trusting that you welcome us with open arms. We come to you now in our time of prayer, trusting you will lead us through our times of trial. We come to you with pleas of mercy, care and protection for those who are experiencing sorrow and struggle who are experiencing a world that is unloving and bleak. Reveal yourself as the creator of love, the embodiment of compassion, the spirit, the spirit of embrace, our Father who art in heaven. Amen. And now, my friends, let us all take a moment of silence 
and allow the healing comfort of God's Holy Spirit to fall upon us. Traditional time in our service when we receive our offerings for the church and our ministries, and I ask that we all continue to support our church. <laughs> 